Hey everyone, so we're just going to talk about what we're studying this week in science. We're talking about the solar system. The solar system is basically made up of a huge star, or a star in general, uh, that, that has planets revolving around it, or it has other space objects that revolve around it. Um, and we're talking also about planets. A planet is a round object that revolves around uh, a star. And so we have eight planets uh, in our system, which is the solar system. Uh, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And we're going to talk a little bit about Pluto later, who we thought was a planet, but it's not a planet anymore. And here we're talking about the axis. An axis is basically an imaginary line that goes through the middle of the planet and it rotates around uh, and this whenever the planet rotates around its own axis, it finishes a day. So for us here on Earth, a day is 24 hours. So that's the length of a day for us. Um, we have Remember how we said we had some other space objects that revolve around the sun? Well, strangely enough, the moon does revolve around the sun, but it has its own orbital course, which revolves around the Earth. So when it revolves around the Earth, it revolves around it every 27 days. And it's the same with some other planets like um, Jupiter or Saturn or, or some other planets that do have moons. But some planets do not have moon actually, moons, actually, like Venus and Mercury. They have none. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, my favorite planet is Jupiter. And do you know that Jupiter has 79 moons? Yes, 79 moons. How awesome is that? Uh, this is because of Jupiter's very, very high gravitational force. It attracts all of these moons and keeps them gravitating around them. And gravitating means that they turn around it. Okay, now we're going to talk about something called the inner planets. The inner planets are called inner planets because they're the closest to um, the solar system, or the, they're, they're the closest, sorry, to the sun. So there are four of them, and those four are uh, we're going to talk about now. So how do we know what is um, what is an inner planet? So basically, we find out because they're the closest from the sun, the four closest from the sun. They're dense. They're very dense, and they're very rocky. Uh, so they're very dense. It means that they're very heavy. They have a heavy mass. And the reason for that it's because is it because they have quite a lot of rocks on their surface or, or because of the makings of that planet. And they also have very thin atmospheres. An atmosphere is um, we have when we say they have a thin atmosphere, it's because mainly of the warmth of the planet. It, it's, it has less gases on it, and it's able to retain uh, some of the gases that are like oxygen and carbon dioxide. And basically, a thin atmosphere allows us to be able to live on it. And not all planets are habitable, but mainly they're able to keep, uh, to keep some of the gases in and some of the gases keep them out. Um, and a small diameter means that it is small in size. It's not a huge planet. So they have large solid cores at their centers. Uh, our planet here on Earth, it has a huge core at the center um, of melted iron. And um, this is the case for the other three planets. Uh, they have different cores, um, albeit, but they do have huge cores at their centers. And they only have a few moons, uh, so and also um, they 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 do tend to have a small uh, revolution time. It's a revolution time is is how 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 they how much they orbit. So that's what a revolution time is. So let's talk. Let's start talking about Mercury. As you see here, 
this is the closest planet to the sun. It's the closest planet to the sun. However, it is not the hottest planet, um, strangely enough. Um, it's the smallest planet in the solar system, and it's actually less, uh, less than half the size of the Earth's uh, size, um, which is pretty cute. Its surface is filled with crates, which is um, a crate happen what happens when uh, space objects hit the surface of, um, of that planet or of that uh, space object. Um, you can see on the moon, the moon has so many crates. Crates are not only made up um, uh, or crates not only happen by space objects hitting those things, but sometimes we do have some, um, some satellites that we send from Earth and they sort of hit these planets or these moons and they create crates. So that's what a crate is. Um, so... On Mercury, if you look at the sun, it would be, it would look three times as big as it would uh, here on Earth. Now let's move on to Venus, the hottest planet in the solar system. So this planet, uh, even though it's the second planet from the sun, it is so hot that um, lead would melt at its surface, and lead is, is it's a metal, so that's pretty tough to melt. Uh, so we have thick clouds that surround Venus, and its atmosphere is mostly made up of carbon dioxide, making it unlivable for humans. And it has a lot of lava that comes out of more than 1,000 volcanoes on its surface. Also, did you know that the clouds of Venus create acid rain? Yes, acid rain. That is absolutely insane. And by the way, the the um, the the most shiny or bright object that you can see from the Earth's distance uh, from the Earth distance after the Moon is Venus. You can actually see Venus with your uh, naked eye. Now let's talk about Mother Earth, our beloved planet. Uh, it's the third planet from the sun and its atmosphere is made up of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So this is the only planet that is known to have uh, a lot of water on it. You would see uh, in comparison the other planets, they either have water um, hidden inside of the planet and not even on a planet but on moons um, and and this is the only one that has a lot of water and that helps keep the temperature on earth sustainable so we would be able to live now let's talk about mars mars has been a very um a very famous planet in hollywood films and it talks about um, humans trying to colonize it and move and live on Mars, even though it's quite difficult. But you might want to take a look at um, Elon Musk's uh, theories about uh, about traveling and colonizing Mars. He's very interested in that and actively working on it. You should definitely check him out. Um, so Mars is known as the red planet because, of, well, clearly it looks red and it has a very rocky surface. So the, this this planet has dust covering its entire uh, its entire platform, um, and it, so basically it looks like a desert. When you zoom into that planet, it looks like a desert, and it has a lot of uh, huge sand dunes. Um, so it has a lot of volcanoes, and also. It has the largest volcano in the whole solar system, as well as the largest canyons in the whole solar system. And by the way, it has two moons. Now, we're going to talk about outer planets, and they're called outer planets because they are further away from the sun. So the first four are the inner planets, the rest of the four are the outer planets, and uh, how we find out what outer planets are like is 
of course, by their distance because they're so far away from the sun. And they're called gas giants. This is this is because of um, their uh, their ability to retain a lot of gas, and they're cold. So they're cold, and they're able to retain a lot of gas uh, around them, and and they're basically mostly made up of gas uh, so they don't have a solid surface um, uh, their surfaces could be uh, could be um, liquid or it could be uh, could be very very difficult and fluctuating so it's not solid it's not something you can stand on um, and they have very small cores in in comparison to the first four cores um, uh, to, the, to the first four planets as cores. Um, and they are, they, their surfaces are so much colder than the first four planets, clearly, because the further away from the sun that they are, the colder they would be. Also, they have a lot of rings around them, and they have a lot of moons. So, looks interesting. Let's take a look at it. Jupiter my favorite planet. So it's the largest planet in the solar system and if we wanted to fit all the other planets in, we would fit them all into Jupiter. How awesome is that? That is, I, it's my favorite, uh, my favorite Jupiter, uh, my favorite planet and I'm just in love with it. So it has something called a red, a great red spot. So this great red spot is basically as huge as three Earths, can you imagine this? Um, and it's basically just storms. It's storms. That's all it is. And it's as huge as three Earths. Can you can you just imagine how huge Jupiter is? Uh, so uh, the rings around Jupiter were discovered by the Voyager um, uh, space probe in 1979. Uh, as I already mentioned this, but Jupiter has 79 moons, which is so interesting, and it has some. Uh, it has it's it has some of the most famous four moons. Its most famous four moons were discovered by um, Galileo uh, Galilei, which is my favorite uh, astronomer, and um, I'll tell you guys about him in a bit. So. Um, now let's just move on to Saturn. Okay, so Saturn is the largest, the second largest planet. It has thousands of rings around it, and they're made up of ice and chunks of rock. See, it looks so beautiful, but it's actually made up of just ice and rock. Uh, so some of Saturn's moons are actually found inside these rings, and Saturn has immensely large storms all around the planet. Uh, there's a fun fact you guys should know is that Saturn has 62 moons, yes. Now Uranus, um, Uranus, let's talk about it. Uranus is very interesting because it actually is kind of flipped to the side. Its axis is so tilted that it flips to the side. So it basically has seasons that last for more than 20 years. Imagine having 20 years of cold, then 20 years of hot, then 20 years of spring. It's just crazy. So inside Uranus, you would find heated, bu heated bubbles uh, that are filled with gas, and they burst onto the surface, which makes it have these very beautiful and bright colors. Uh, so Uranus, uh, it has at least... 13 rings around it and do you know that it is the it has the coldest temperature of all of the planets which is minus 224 degrees celsius yes that is absolutely crazy okay now let's talk about the last planet um and the furthest planet from the sun neptune uh, so this is the windiest planet uh, in the solar system. The winds are just so volatile and so strong um, that they actually cause this great dark spot around the planet. So, and this great dark spot, it has like a storm that keeps brewing and sometimes it shows up and sometimes it disappears. So it's a mystery. And uh, Neptune has nine rings around it. Uh, by the way, Fun fact, 
<laughs> one day on Neptune lasts for 165 Earth days. Uh, so this all depends on the axis, and its axis, I'm guessing, is uh, is what causes that. Now we're going to uh, talk about comparing inner and outer planets. So inner planets, they have rocky surfaces, and outer planets, they're a bit more dense. Uh, so inner planets, they're close to the sun, and outer planets, they're far away from the sun. Uh, inner planets have a lot of moon, have a few moons. Outer planets have a lot of moons. Um, they're, the inner planets are much smaller, and the outer planets are much bigger. Uh, they're, the inner planets are warmer, the outer planets are colder. Uh, the inner planets are less dense, and the outer planets are more dense. Uh, the inner planets have shorter years, while the outer planets have longer years. And also the outer planets, they may have rings and they have much more moons, as we've, um, we've uh, discussed. So what is similar between the two of them is that they both orbit the sun, they both have gravity, and they both have a core. However, the outer, the outer planets, they have smaller cores, while the inner, they have huge cores. The gravity on the outer planets are much is much stronger uh, in comparison to the inner planets, and, well, they both orbit the sun. So, now let's talk about flying objects that are in our solar system, and now we're going to talk about Pluto. Pluto was um, categorized as a planet, but now not anymore because it was discovered to be a dwarf planet, and what is a dwarf planet? Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, dwarf planet, they're rounded objects and sometimes not so rounded, but more elliptical in shape. And so their orb orbits cross the orbits of other bodies. So they, they revolve around other um, planets or other bodies. Uh, so they're mainly found in Coupier's belt. Uh, this is an area that is after Neptune, which is very far away. So that's why it's very difficult to study dwarf, um, dwarf planets because they're just so far uh, away from, from Earth to study. Now let's talk about moons. Um, Oh, I don't have that on. But anyways, moons, moons, they are very different from planet, from planet Earth's moons, uh, because um, some of them, they actually have volcanoes. Some of them have a lot of water under, under, under ice. So these are actually, these moons that I'm talking about revolve around Jupiter. So one of them is called Io, which is the one that has a lot of active volcanoes. It's crazy. It's full of active volcanoes. Um, and Europa is one of Jupiter's moons that are the most interesting moons because um, scientists right now are looking into it and they're thinking that since uh, there is warm water under, um, under uh, its surface, then it means it might have bacteria growing there, which means we might find life on other planets, which is just extremely interesting and exciting. Okay, now we can talk about asteroids. What are asteroids? They're basically just made up of rock and iron objects, uh, rock and iron, and they they revolve around the sun. Uh, so a lot of them are found between Jupiter and Mars. So this is called the asteroid belt. There was like a million of them over there. Um, also, um, some asteroids are known to have their own moon. <laughs> yes, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, and did you know that there's an asteroid that's coming near Earth on April 2020? It's going to come so close to the Earth that... Um, we would actually be able to see it. Yes, that's that's going to be fun. It's not going to hit Earth, but it's going to be very close to it. And um, it actually has a 27% chance of hitting Earth, but hopefully not. All right, now we're going to talk about meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites. So what are meteoroids? Oh, here's our moon. 
Apologies. Uh, it was just mixed up. I mixed it up. So now, let's talk about uh, meteoroids. A meteoroid is basically a huge piece of rock that breaks off asteroids. And it just keeps on traveling through space. And so some of them, they end up, when they end up in, into the Earth's atmosphere, they turn into meteors because they burn up when they get in there. So it causes like this light to go after it. Um, and then when it, uh, when a small piece of that uh, breaks um, and, and it causes light, this is when it is called a meteor, right? Then meteoroids, when they reach the Earth's surface, they're called meteorites. So this is only when they hit it. Some of them have hit it and some of them um, are, have been thought to hit Earth a few million years later. We're going to talk about this um, in the last slide. Okay, comets. Comets are just so beautiful. A lot of people um, watch comets or comet showers and they have they ask for wishes to come true this is like uh, what a lot of people do but what a lot of people don't know is that they're actually just made up of frozen gases rock ice and dust and it keeps revolving around the, the Sun and sometimes when it goes too close uh, to the Sun um, the surface of it starts melting so it starts giving out gas and it starts giving out um, um, dust and that is what we see as what we see as very beautiful a uh, very beautiful shining light it's just that that the light of the sun is reflecting towards it and so it makes it look like it has a beautiful long tail and so it, it's always pointing away from the sun because because it just keeps marching towards it while it melts um now we're going to talk about space watch what is space watch space watch is basically um space agencies or scientists that keep watching uh, space as I told you uh, so remember how I told you that there's a um, there's um, uh, an asteroid coming near earth well how do we know that it's because of people that are uh, watching out uh, watching the outer space they're watching comets they're watching asteroids that could have a huge impact on earth or that could have an impact impact it means it hits earth so uh, these scientists, they keep looking through telescopes and they keep, uh, they keep their eyes out on whatever might hit Earth. So there's this, um, there's this huge meteor that hit Earth about like 50,000 years ago and you can still see um, how, how, how the Earth has, um, it has like this big crater uh you know dug deep in it because of this meteor also um some scientists think that like some large objects have hit earth a long time ago and they think that a huge meteor or asteroid may have hit earth about 65 million years ago and they think that that's what killed dinosaurs but um we don't know so anyways this is our lesson for today um <laughs> this is a little joke I just put on in case you thought this is space watch um, I just thought it's it's kind of funny and cute thank you so much for uh, tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the lesson um, please let me know what you think about it and if you want some more lessons just let me know in the comments below and have a great time bye bye